G'day fellas and welcome to a build order breakdown. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the build order used by the Muslim when playing the Abbasid Dynasty. For anybody unfamiliar with the Muslim, an incredibly talent pl talented player, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can catch more of his content. But already we can see how he has begun opening up. So sending all of his villagers out over onto the mill uh, or out of, over onto the berries. He's going to be dropping down a mill, immediately dropping down a house, a house of wisdom and a mining camp with a single villager tapping away on, on it. And he's doing this all very early. So all you really need to know at this point is that seven villagers are on food. One villager is on gold and that he has made a house, house of wisdom and a mill all with individual villagers. At least that's what it appears to be. So we're going to continue watching and seeing what he does. He's gone for an eighth villager on food. Now, one thing to note is that he is playing an Abbasid mirror. So essentially in the Abbasid mirror, the way that it works is based on um, ideally whoever booms the hardest. So two TCs loses to three TCs. Three TCs will... I mean, four TCs is probably too many. Uh, don't, be making two, don't be making four TCs. Uh, but three will be sufficient. Uh, but now we see that he's added a second villager out here onto gold. Third villager going to be coming out here as well. And the build order that we're going to be seeing today uh, as he moves some, some uh, sheep back here. Doesn't look like it's going to get taken out. He is going up against PFD. I, I can't even say that. Uh, Denev Denevid? I, a divine. I think it's divine, actually. I think it might be divine on his Abbasid account, potentially. Uh, but now you can see... Uh, so because he's gone for an early mill, it means that he's going to have to chop from straggler trees. So obviously this is a, a less efficient way of uh, gathering wood in the early game. Obviously you'd want to do a lumber camp where possible, but the Muslim doesn't do that. He goes for the straggler camp here uh, and now going to be adding in that next villager. So going to have four villagers here and you can see he manages to cross over at the perfect time. You can see he's now aging up about two minutes 30 Already got that mill down as well. And now going to be moving more villagers back to uh, look to pick up the straggler tree. So four villagers on that. Going to have a fifth villager now going out. Just five villagers back here on uh, on the berries. He's going to be scouting out his enemy as well. But uh, this timing that the Muslim is doing is a very strong timing. Um, and one of the reasons why is because he doesn't actually go for... Um, for, for a llama camp early, he will go for uh, for the mill first. And that means that he is on very efficient forms of food for this early game period. And that's going to mean that he can not necessarily cut, but it means that he's able to get up his resources a lot quicker. So now we see that lumber camp going to be coming down here. He opts to go for the lumber camp first before researching the wheelbarrow because obviously he doesn't have enough gold yet for the wheelbarrow. But you're about to see the wheelbarrow is about to come in any second, any second any second there it is so wheelbarrow going to be coming in and now the gold that he's saving up is going to be completely for that fresh food stuff so he needs 125 of that now there's a way that you can play it so that you actually get a little bit more gold uh for a spearman upgrade now that makes sense going up against civilizations like the french um but other than that or maybe against the uh, the Rus as well that could work um, but other than that you would typically just gather the 125 and then you would begin transitioning your villagers over to another resource now one of the other things that he's doing is as uh or what you should notice is that he is extending out all of his network amongst uh out, out to the furthest reaches that he can grab now the villagers going to be pulled in 126 gold absolutely perfect there the muslim very well played um and uh, now going to be researching that fresh food stuff so we're at four minutes 19 now some people will be looking at this build order and saying okay drongo you know why why are we getting wheelbarrow why are we getting fresh food stuffs in, instead of just not rushing that second town center we used to be able to get that second town center up at about 445 so why are we not doing that here well the reason why is because if you if you delay your feudal which is exactly what you do because the abbasid don't start off with a uh don't start off with a lot of wood um it, it, it just makes it very difficult uh, to, to find a timing for your wheelbarrow um, and, and to get everything down. Uh, so th the problem is that having wheelbarrow is very efficient, especially for wood chopping. Uh, and th that's really where it comes in. But now you can see he's moved a huge amount of villagers out to stone as well. He's got nine villagers out there at the moment. Now, all of these guys have got wheelbarrow on them as well. You can see wheelbarrow has been completed. Uh, so they're going to be returning back 15 stone a pop. Um, and he's going to be slowly working his way up to that second town center. Now, 
Now, this is going to be a three town center build uh, that we are going to be seeing out of De Muslim here. So he's going to be leaving the majority of his villages on stone here. At the same time, you can see he's adding in uh, more and more villages over to food at this point. No villages on gold at this stage. Uh, and now going to be pulling villages back. And look how many villages he's actually going to be dropping this town center down with. Just simply because the faster you drop this town center down, then the more villages you're going to have. So obviously, it's a loss of resources right now. But that, keep in mind, that is a static loss of resources by building this with 10 villages. Whereas over the, the rest of the game, you're going to have a trickle of resources that are coming in. Because a, a town center takes uh, two minutes to make. So that means with four villages, it takes one minute to make. That means with 10 villages, it takes 30 seconds to make. So in that time, you're able to actually make, you know, about five or six. Or, yeah, it works out to be about four and a half villages in that time. Uh, and think about how fast they, they get themselves or they pay themselves off. It's incredibly fast. So now going to be looking to get that third town center up. And you can see he's really not too fussed about food. It's all about collecting the stone, all about collecting the wood. Now, one of the things to note is that behind this, he's also checking his enemy. He's making sure that his enemy is also going for a town center. So if he spots his enemy not going for a town center and spots him going for something different, then that means that he is going to... Um, that means he's only going to drop the second town center and then he's going to uh, look to make military. Whereas in this situation, he actually spots out that the enemy is going for a two town center boom um, or a, a two town center build, which actually loses to a three town center boom because uh, all you need to do is just play defensive. Um, so he, he subsequently comes off the stone. He's got 300 stone in the bank and you can see the difference between the three town center and the two town center boom the, the second town center the timing for it is very very quick and now gonna be dropping down seven villages on this town center getting it down at seven minutes incredible macro coming out right here from De, De Muslim. he's looking incredible now gonna be moving and focusing all of his villages onto gold and food so you can see that he's really prioritizing a lot of uh, movement of his villages in this situation but it is necessary uh, just because it's important that you're focusing the correct resources at the correct times. Uh, and so that is exactly what he is doing. Uh, so you can see he's now got seven villages out on gold, 16 villages on food. Uh, and at the same time, if we take a look from his perspective, you can see he's got more expansion that he can do. But it is towards the front. So always a little bit uh, dangerous to do more expansions down towards the south if he needs to as well. Uh, but I don't think he's scouted that one out. No, he has scouted that one out. So he's going to be able to expand down there uh, if, if uh, need be. But... This is, uh, this is where he is uh, posturing for Castle Age at this point. So it's all about getting up to the Castle Age. And once you're in Castle, there's a couple of different compositions that you can go. The most common composition when doing a Abbasid fast, a fast castle um, is going to be crossbows and men at arms. Sorry, it took me a little while just there. I was, I was trying to think of them. I'm like, archers? No, it's crossbows. Crossbows and men at arms. Um, and so what the Muslim's actually going to be doing is just going for full crossbows. And it's a very interesting style that he plays in this game. Um, so we're not going to watch the full game. Uh, we are just going to watch the beginning of the game just to see the build order and the way that it works. But you can see now that uh, behind this, he is slowly but steadily gathering up more resources. No other upgrades coming through. So you can see that he still yet to grab double broad axe, no specialized pick, no uh, horticulture at this stage. He is just keeping everything basic. And it makes a lot of sense to do because it, it, these upgrades can be quite expensive. But now going to be able to click up at about the uh, about the 9 minute 20 mark. I think you'll be able to get up. Uh, but you can see a lot of villages. He's got 16 villages on these berries. They're going to be coming out very, very soon. Um, but now managing to uh, scout out the enemy. Spots a lot of villagers going over to stone. So at, at this point in time, you get a little bit worried. You're like, okay, what is he doing with all this stone? Like that's a lot. That That's 13 villagers on stone. That's probably going to be a fast castle. Uh, oh, sorry, not a fast castle, but a fast keep. Uh, so a, a potential keep drop that happens. Uh, which... which uh, I, I theorize it's probably not a bad play, especially considering the spawn that the Muslims got. So if you take a look from the perspective of his opponent, so you can see that he's up on going up to the third age here, uh, and he's gathering up a shitload of, uh, of stone. He could have stayed on that and then just moved out a whole bunch of villages. So maybe just moved out all the wood villages and all the gold villages together and just come down and just put a, uh, a keep right here. Uh, and it would have just absolutely... In my opinion, it would have just knocked the Muslim out um, because, you know, he loses this both of these food sources. They're very, very important. Uh, 500 food on each one of these bushes. Um, but not it didn't happen. It didn't happen. The Muslim obviously was scouting, preparing, uh, and we, he saw a third town center go up. So the Muslim realizes that uh, he is going to be a, relatively safe in this position, still training villagers out of every single town center. He's up to 55 at the moment at the 10-minute mark and gathering up a lot of gold, a lot of food. 
not really focusing too much on wood. Uh, in my opinion, in the transition period for the Abbasid, you really want to be focusing on wood. It's so important that you get your um, your second level of dynasty out. So you can see here, or rather Golden Age. So you can see that you've got um, two tiers, te uh, tier one, tier two. Uh, so 10 structures and 30 structures. This is really important to hit. Uh, but at the same time, you also want to get your basic infrastructure down, uh, being your archery ranges and your barracks. Uh, and if, if you, I mean, he's, he's got a fair amount of villages here on the, um, on, on the wood line. So this is absolutely fine. Um, but sometimes you will see players only going for like nine or ten villages on wood. So it's important during your transition period, make sure that you are gathering up lots and lots of wood uh, to be able to drop down those um, those infrastructure pieces. Uh, but now also we see him dropping down an outpost on the front just to provide a bit more line of sight. There were um, munerations that there might be... or. Rem Sorry, not munerations, but there were mumblings that there might be a fast keep getting dropped just because of how heavily he was on stone. So he was very cognizant of that and subsequently drops down that outpost just to give him a bit more line of sight. But you can see continuing to add archery ranges. But yeah, that's that's essentially the build order. He's now up into the castle age. So from here, he's just going to be massing crossbows over on the other side of the map, though. Um, so we can see Divine. He is not really up to much. Let's have a look at his infrastructure. I have got no idea what Divine is doing. Um, he's sitting on two TCs. He's added in the third one, but he's got barely any infrastructure. You can see right now, he's going for a second archery range at this point. But yeah, it's uh, 11 minutes. It's very, very late. Um, he's sitting on 58 villagers compared to 70 for De Muslim. So De Muslim absolutely miles ahead. And obviously, De Muslim does go on to win this game and do so in, in quite a bit of style. So there you go, fellas. If you're looking to learn a macro like De Muslim, there it is. Uh, he's an incredibly talented player. He's going to be playing this weekend in the Golden League. So if you're interested in watching that, make sure you tune in. I'll leave a link in the description over to that as well. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much it. It's, uh, it's from here. It's a very simple game. Just training villagers out of the town center nonstop. And uh, crossbows, men at arms, all those good things. Horsemen as well, always really good in this composition. And, of course, building your siege out on the field like how he's done here. But that's it, fellas. I hope you've enjoyed. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.